What's going on? My name is Hector Rodriguez. I'm the owner and CEO of Optic Gaming, and today I am going to be giving you my review of the 2016 G63 AMG G Wagon, or it's the G63 as it's known. But while we're at it, and since I might be saying goodbye to this, why not take the time to do a side-by-side -side comparison of 2016 and the upgraded and most beautiful model that is the 2019 G63 AMG. As much as I'd like to sit here and tell you exactly what changed and what's different, what's been upgraded and what hasn't, and go into every single bit of detail, I'm just gonna give you the, the bird's eye view of what I am noticing as the most change that you'll see all right and we're gonna start off with the front the front guard comes up all the way to the hood of the car in comparison to the new one which only has the fender protected I actually at first didn't like that as much but now that I look at it, I do love the fact that the logo is exposed the the front grille is exposed and obviously the incredible lights that are multi-beam LED that just shine as bright as the eye can see at night at least. Uh, the hood itself has changed massively. If you guys see side by side, this, this one is completely, completely way more wide than this one. And that is some, one of the things that I do like about it. What I loved most about my car, the G63, which I bought from Nate Shot, mind you. And yes, for those asking, he has been paid in full. Okay, you can verify that on Twitter. Okay, so uh, another thing that you'll notice is that the front lights, the front headlights, as you see here, have five LEDs at the bottom, on, you know, on, under the actual headlight, where in the new one, you absolutely do not. You have it in a position in which it surrounds the entirety of the headlight as opposed to having three at the bottom, which to me is super, super sleek and sexy. The ultimate change that I see most is that this truck to me seemed like a true utility vehicle, a literal indestructible armored car, which is what I felt every single time I drove it. In fact, every single time that somebody exited the door, more often than not, they wouldn't close the door all the way because people are used to not slamming. With this car, however, because of how heavy the doors are and because how well built it is, you have to slam it. And that I appreciated a lot because it felt like a literal indestructible force. Now, the side profile of, uh, of, of the old G-Wagon model is something that is as legendary as you can see. When you see this, you know what it is that is out there. What I don't like and have never liked about this is that every single fixture that's attached to it, whether it's the reflectors or the lights like these have exposed screws and it seems to me as though they were an afterthought, or I don't know if, if because of the way that they built the model that that's the, the way it came, but as much as I did like the view of it, I always felt as though it was a little bit of an afterthought, if that makes any sense. So just a, a quick a quick note about the windows. The windows on the new one seem a little bit bigger or more uh, rounded out, which is something aesthetically that I do appreciate that they did, simply because it looks a lot more fancy. And that's gonna be the theme here. Something that looked like a, an incredible utility vehicle and an armored car in comparison to something super, super fancy as you'll see in the 2019 version of it. Now let's go to the back. So one of the things that you will notice the most about the back of the car is a ton, a ton of change. Mostly to do with the wiper. It is now at the bottom in the new one. And this little protruding camera just never made any sense to me why is it out why is it all the way out there maybe it's because of the uh, reserve tire in the back that makes it logical for them to do that but when you see the new one you truly see a well thought out design that will make it look a little bit better um, as much as i like the lights sticking out the way they do because again we're looking at an armored card essentially i do appreciate the new version of it where it's a little bit more flushed and more thought out in terms of the design so as you see here as I mentioned on the other one, it just seemed like they stuck something in there where here it's a little bit more well thought out and defined. You have window ridge and then you have the ridge that it flushes into the reflectors uh, and not like the ones that you saw in the past. And then you go into the fender flares as you guys see here. Now the difference uh, stock you have uh, 22 inch rims versus 20 inch rims that you see on the regular wagon. And also obviously the exposed twin bit turbos is something that's incredibly cool. Now I'll go in a little bit into the 
engine and the size difference uh, a little bit later. But I did want to show you what they changed on the back of this one in comparison to the one that we saw just recently with the old G63. As you guys see here, the spare wheel is as big as it is. Everything is flushed out at the end, including the brake lights, which do not protrude as much as the other ones did, which is obviously to me aesthetically and from a visual standpoint, incredible good looking. Uh, okay, so the other thing is that they, they, they removed the protruding camera that you guys had above here, as you saw on the other one, and they've moved it down into a secret compartment circle that when put in reverse, it opens up as it does in, in, in all of the AMGs, and now you have your backup camera. To me, that makes a lot more sense than having something like that protruding. Again, I am in love with the G63 from 2016, but the comparison of what an armored vehicle slash utility vehicle to something much bigger, wider, and you'll see the difference when we go inside of it. When you see the difference when you go inside, of it, you, you, you step into a world of luxury where in the other one, again, you're stepping into an off-road vehicle that doesn't necessarily scream luxury the way that this beast does. All right, I'm not gonna sit in front of this and tell you what I find wrong about it. Obviously, the technology in 216 is just completely different than what it is right now. Now, this car is an incredible vehicle, as I've explained to you this entire time. But as a driver, and when you are buying a Mercedes-Benz automobile, you, you imagine yourself stepping into the world of luxury, right? But as I mentioned, this is more of an off-road vehicle that is more utility and indestructible than what you're gonna see here. Right off the bat, you have a nine inch, I believe, don't get me wrong, a nine inch display that just doesn't do the whole thing justice. The other thing that has always annoyed me about this vehicle is that if you want cup holders, you have to open that up and use these two. And what sort of cup can you fit in there? You can't. Now for the driver, you have to use the passenger retractable cup holders that goes in there. Again, off-roading, adventure, minimalistic, I appreciate it. But again, you know, buying a Mercedes, I mean, at this point, just buy a Defender uh, from, from Land Rover. But this, again, is some of the things that, that just don't appeal to me as much as the new one does. And had the new one ever come out, I would have been none the wiser and I would have just been happy with what I have in front of me because it is a beautiful car. The other thing that, one of the reasons that Judith ended up being okay with me taking this car from her as I, as I did, is because the steering wheel and the power driving, the power steering in this one is not as good as it is on the new one. There's, I'm sure there's mechanics out there that will understand why that is, but personally, I just don't see the difference. Now looking out of the dashboard and into the front, you truly see the difference of the magnitude of the size that is this thin looking G-Wagon versus the new and improved one. But right off the rip, I'm telling you, the di look, look at the center console as you see here. Look at how tiny this little armrest is. You'll see the comparison once we get in there. And again, this is 2016 and 2019 technology and, and all that aside, I don't think that this was that great of a vehicle. Uh, the, the inside of this vehicle wasn't as, as good as it should have been or it could have been. Uh, but it does its job. Henry fits in here perfectly, so no harm, no foul. One quick thing before we move on from the seats. The seats, as comfortable as they are, this sort of mechanic that you have here that allows for air or hydraulic system to push the lumbar support or to remove the lumbar support to make it sturdier, make it softer, make it more cushiony, it, it, it's, again, not complaining about technology or anything, but again, this wasn't that well thought out if I am being honest. All right, now, when you compare what you just saw to the luxurious look of this new 2019 G-Wagon, you truly, truly step into a world of luxury, as you will see right now. Now, these seats come with everything. They're dynamic seats. They have massagers inside that really do. It, just picture those massagers that you see at the mall where you go in and you sit down and then they hug your calves and then you put it in, in certain modes and it's just, that's exactly what this thing does. The other thing is that if I'm turning left, the right side that you see here will hug you or keep you in position so you can have full control of your vehicle at all times. The other one doesn't have that. So when you're driving, it might be a little bit distracting at first, but once you get truly used to it, you see the need for it. If you're going too fast, this will push you forward. So instead of flying this way when you're turning because of inertia and whatever, this will keep you in place. Same thing on the other side. They just literally move, move you in, move you in, depending on which way you're turning. Now, 
obviously, from the beginning, you truly see an amazing, amazing dashboard. You're going from a literal six inch to nine inch uh, little command center to a beast of a command center. I don't know the measurements of this exactly, but I would say it's close to two feet long by, let's call it seven inches. Now this command center takes care of absolutely everything as it should. It's touch screen, so you can get from one option of your menu to the other. You can type on here or you can type whatever it is that you need on this sensor, just like you would on an iPhone. Um, look at how big the center console is. Look at this. We have two cup holders where they should be. No longer do I have to open this up and be, you know, and have to put my drink there or reach all the way over as I'm driving to use the passenger foldable uh, cup holder. Now we have two here. And again, you have the option of being comfortable because of this massive center console truly allows you to be comfortable in a world of luxury as it is. Now, from a space standpoint, this is more spacious than I could have. I didn't think it was going to be that big of a difference until I set down in it. And I immediately fell in love with the dynamic seats and with everything that it has to offer the steering wheel. I mean, obviously the technology, so we're going to leave that aside because it's unfair to, to compare 2019 technology to 2016 technology. So we're just leave it that. Um, but everything that you need, everything that you could ever think of is right here. And it is amazing. Now I'm going to show you the trunk space. And from there, I think we're done with this walkthrough demo over the top bird's eye view, nothing too specific. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna compare the trunk space in this, and to be honest, there's literally almost no difference. Uh, you're gonna pardon this because we, uh, we actually threw Henry in here to do a size comparison of, uh, of the car, and you truly didn't see it. Like if you, Matt, come here, and then can you see, can you see the smudges on there? Are you able to see them? All right, well, listen, if there was ever a time for me to truly use this would be like right now the spray and wipe glass cleaner this is one that you guys saw me do the commercial in where you literally put the stuff from underneath it you spray it and you apply the wipe and it goes away instantaneously with no problem can you see it now matt look at that easy peasy easy peasy so as I was saying, the trunk space uh, comparison is literally slim to none. The size is almost the same. It's just that the other one looks a little bit better. The wheel wells on this one don't protrude all the way to the top the way that they do in this. But that's also because this trunk is a little bit more suited for the width and the height of the new one, because I believe it's an inch taller than the traditional one or two inches, depending. Obviously, the one's 20 inch uh, rims and the other one's 22. So that's what it is. So again, pardon the, the hair there uh, once this video is all said and done. I'm going to use the uh, the Turtle Wax Pet Cleaner to get the, the hair out of the way. Um, but yeah, that's that. So really cool thing about the lights, as I just explained, is the fact that this one has it in the full circle. Now, uh, for the engine, nothing really changed. I think it's like a 13 uh, horsepower difference. We're looking at the 2016 coming in at 563 horsepower versus 577 horsepower, seven speed automatic, nine speed automatic. I, uh, there, there's plenty of videos out there that explain the difference. so I won't go too much into it. Uh, but if you do want to do the research, there is massive, massive difference is uh, that you know, you car buffs may uh, look at it. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I, I love each and every single one of these cars. If I had my choice to do it all over again, I would totally go with the beast that is the indestructible force that is the G63 2016 AMG Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon versus the 2019. So if I could have the feel of the old school military-esque indestructible feeling on a beast like this one, I totally would. But don't get me wrong, the comparison between the luxury between the two is almost incomparable. This one can't even get the cup holders right, where this one has dynamic seating that keep you in place when you whip in the corners the way that a professional race car driver like somebody else might do, or as I pretend to be. And that is going to be a common man's perspective on the comparison between the 2016 and the 2019 G63 AMG by Mercedes-Benz. Now, this vehicle 
was the same color as this vehicle, but we added a wrap, or Nate Shot added the wrap of this sort of gunmetal gray to it. I'm gonna wrap this one for Judith, and I need your help deciding on what it is. So if you have an idea of what I should do, what color I should do, leave a comment down below. In the meantime, do not leave without leaving a like on the video, do not leave without subscribing to this channel. So, we'll see you guys on the next one. Good.